So, lady and gent, how are you guys doing? This is your boy, Chris, coming back with yet another reptile video to help you guys raise your reptile in a best condition. So today, what we are going to go over is we are going to go over the WY Leopard Gecko Morph that everyone wants to know about, and especially you guys wanted to know about. And I have found a couple of comments um, from my previous video where you guys were asking about reviewing the WY. So I'm going to be reviewing the WY Morph today with you guys. And before I start my slide, there's a couple of things that I want to break down um, in this slide so you guys can understand a little bit better while I'm reviewing these informations. And number one things that I'm going to go over is going to be the history, um, how they were found and where was it located. And so those are the things that I'm going to go over for the leopard gecko more for WI. And the second one is going to be the genetic traits, so whether if it's going to be recessive, incomplete dominant or dominant or polygenetics, which also called as line bread. That's something that I'm going to go over for the WI genetics and also thirdly there's going to be a effect that's gonna happen when you mix WY with the other type of leopard gecko move. So those are the things that I'm going to go over and let's start wasting our time and let's get into it. So briefly going over the history for WY genetics it was a random mutation in um, that was found in Belarus Circa which is area in Europe in 2000s and some people say this is a dominant and some people say this is lime bread and major reason why they call both both of them is because when you have a WY genetics in your project, most of WY that you see in the markets are probably mixed with all cross with tangerine lines or super hypo or other type of mix that makes it line bread. And usually when you mix with those two, it kind of became like a line bread genetics, polygenetics genetics for your WY projects. And that's why some breeders call it as a line bread. But originally when I found certain information in the internet, I have found that WYs are dominant when it comes to just the pure WI which is almost impossible to find nowadays in the market because a lot of breeder who works with WI they tend to have some kind of mixed genetics with WI genetics so um, based on the information that I've collected I think it is a dominance but if you are working with it and you know this is going to be a polygenetics let me know down in the comments I'd love to see some example videos for that I am now working with the WI starting this year so there will be a couple of experience and a couple of information with I will be updating with you guys next year when I produce uh, hatchlings, um, whether if it's going to be line bread or dominance. But based on the information, it does sound like it is dominance when you just have a pure WY, non hat, non albino lines, just the uh, pure WY genetics. And WY, because they are so popular, a lot of breeder has been all crossing with other genetics, which can be albino lines or tangerine lines or snow, max snow or gem snow, tuck snow. It is now really hard to find that pure WY genetics in the market which I have found one breeder who actually worked with WY but I feel like a lot of breeders don't really work with a pure WY is because it is not really pleasing when it comes to looking at the color itself with a WY the good thing about the WY is when you mix with other genetics together with the WY that's when it becomes super super beautiful it's just my personal opinion WY the pure WY itself can be beautiful but in my opinion I feel like WYs are really really good to mix with other genetics together and that's what makes a really really popular um, and a lot of people works with WY because they basically gives that bright colors and hypo patterns and other things which I went over a couple seconds ago here are the couple of example what's actually going to happen when you mix WY with other genetics it definitely boosts up the colors color enhancer pastel and hypo as you can see those are the three things that happens when you mix WY with other genetics and I have I pulled up some of the example photos on the slide which on the left side it is a WY Tramper Red Stripe which one of my female is going to be like that. I haven't received yet but I'll definitely keep you guys updated when I receive that female to allocations. Currently Las Vegas is super super hot so I'm still waiting on it but in September I think that I'll be getting them very soon. And then right in the middle this is a mix between Pastel Reptile and Raven Lavender. Um, they call it as a Rebirth Stripe Maxino for this uh, Leopard Geckos. It doesn't have a WY. I'm just giving you guys a good example colors that actually happens to WY uh, when you mix with it. Um, it's not going to be exactly like that but that is some example that I would like you to know when you mix WY. And right on the side is going to be the Super Hypo Max Snow Albino. This also doesn't have a WY genetics but it gives you that example of hypo patterns. What hypo is usually normally the normal leopard gecko they have a lot of pattern on their body on their head but if you have a hypo then 
it becomes less likely to have that patterns or dots. I'm not saying it's going to be no pattern. That's called super hypo, but for hypo, it will have a less patterns on its skin. The next one, next slide, I have a really good picture right here. This is actually one of the original picture that came from the original breeder who found the WI. And as you can see, this one has the dark paradox. For those who doesn't know what paradox is, paradox is one of like a dark pattern that's on their skin. And normally this is not like a polygenetic or recessive or dominant trait. This is just something random mutations, I would say. That's how I think of it as a paradox. It's unpredictable and they can sometimes be on their head or their body or their legs or their tails. As you can see, those dark dots are usually called a the paradox. If you have a bunch of dark dots on your body, that's not a paradox. It's just a unpredictable dark dot on their body. It usually have just one of them or two and that's pretty much it to be considered as a dark paradox. And usually those are a little bit bigger as well compared to the regular normal dots. And the next slide, uh, it is a hypo, which I've mentioned in previous slide. Um, they have a less patterns, less pattern on the tail head and usually the color of that patterns do fade away as they get older. Normally, Lair Forget Go has that black dots on their face or tail or their body, but when you put WY together and mix with those together, then your hatching tends to show as a brown, pinkish color patterns instead of a black pattern. So that's something that happens when you mix WY with it, and I do think that it's really, really cool. Can't wait to see how my hatching, future hatching is going to be looking like when it has a WY, but that is one of the good example that I can tell you when it comes to mixing W white genetics. So the next one is going to be the high white side. What high white side is, basically when you look at leopard geckos, I highly recommend checking with your leopard gecko if you have leopard gecko right now, but usually normally leopard geckos, they tend to have more of those yellow colors on the side or black or some other colors depending on which morph you're breeding. But when you mix WY, um, it tends to have a bigger white portion on the side of your belly. I, I would say waist. Their leopard geckos, they tend to about that white portions more than the other colors and that's what usually happens when you have a WY genetics with your leopard gecko. But if you have a leopard gecko that doesn't have a WY, they also can have those type of proportion but it's just giving you guys a good example what's going to actually happen when you have a WY. Or sometimes it could be smaller too um, but I tend to find that a lot of breeders say that they have a high portion of the white side. The next one is the Enigma which a lot of people ask are they similar to Enigma because of that color of the white tail. Um, Enigmas are dominant too. However, one thing that I noticed is that WY, although they have a syndromes, like how everyone knows about the Enigma syndrome. However, WY, they tend to have a less of those issues. It's a very rare to have, have those issues with the WY actually. And the keratels is one of the main key factor when it comes to differentiating with the WY and Enigma. Usually WY, they can have the keratel, like those orange color tails on their body but in Nima they actually can't have those orange color so if you're working with them, that's one of the big characteristics that I can find between the Enigma and WY. But other than that, both of them do actually boost up a lot of colors for the orange or white colors or uh, yellow colors. So those are a little bit similar, but they're, they are different. So don't get confused between Enigma or WY. They're different lines. So the last slide I want to show you guys is the couple of the names that was actually named after the very first WY lines. There's a WY Blonde, WY WY striped, WY paradox spots, and WY fire flash. I have went over the striped and paradox ones, paradox spots, which I showed you that black dot patterns. Um, I haven't heard or seen with the blonde and fire flash. Therefore, I have reached out to multiple breeders a couple days ago to see if they know anything about it. But unfortunately, they still can't find those informations out there and they don't have any examples. Some breeders say it might probably be the marketing things that they work with. Um, usually, some gecko breeders, they tends to put different name to sell more geckos. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why they have those additional names. Those are the things that I have found in the book when I was uh, studying WI. If you did find any of those examples for Bland or Fireflies, let me know. I would love to check it out and find those good example photos for those genetics. That's it. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you get a value out of this video, make sure you hit that like and share this video with your friends because I do share really good information every week for 
for our leopard gecko lovers and red eye capacity lovers. And lastly, I want you guys to click that subscribe button so that you guys can get those updates and make sure you turn on the notifications if you're clicking that subscribe button so that you can get every update on our potters, on our leopard gecko morph, on the red eye capacity guide. So, and also if you have any questions or if you guys want to see some other genetics, make sure you write a comment down below and I'll try to come up with something like this again for you guys if it does sound like a really really good example to go over. So let me know what you guys think about this video and also ask me if there's any other morph that you want to uh, want to learn about um, and I'll try to come up with this video. Keep asking and I'll keep answering your questions. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you guys in the next video.